Hello everybody, Alex here. Welcome to my finance and accounting education channel. Today we are going to have a company presentation. Let's say that uh, we have not done that many before. We talked about uh, UiPath, about Tesla several times. Uh, we talked about the sector. We are going to stay uh, in that sector that we previously sp uh, spoke about. You can uh, access the video about the semiconductors, so the, the processors or uh, integrated circuits or whatever you call them. Um, the, the previous video that I made on this topic, uh, we were back then talking about uh, several companies that are relevant for this sector, but today we are going to focus on only one of these companies and the name of the company is ASML, so or ASMLA, it depends. Uh, I'm calling them the overlords of processors and I hope after today's presentation you will understand uh, why is that and because um, compared with the other three uh, companies that I have already presented to you uh, let's say that this company is so special because it's actually the supplier for all the other three and it's even more special because it's already a monopoly and it has achieved a level of te uh, technological uh, development and innovation that not many companies in any other sectors have achieved so far um, they are producing some machines which are considered to be the most sophisticated in the world right now and when talking about innovation I think that I can always give such a company as example I know others are talking about Tesla and uh, their uh, uh, actors dressed as robots and things like this but I'm talking about real innovation uh, not about, about jokes uh, so let's jump right in so ASML stands for Advanced Semiconductor Ma Materials Lithography. Uh, so we are talking about semiconductors, it's, it's clear. Uh, it's an e European company which functions in the Netherlands. It was founded in uh, 1984, it's listed since 1995 on two stock exchanges, uh, actually in, in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, but also in the United States on the Nasdaq uh, market. And it was founded by two European companies, so the a ASM International, ASM is quite clear, is the same uh, advanced semiconductor materials. And the other one you might have already heard about, it is a large uh, home appliances and electronics uh, manufacturer called Philips, also another European company. Um, what they are actually producing is uh, complex lithography machines. Uh, that chip makers use to produce integrated circuits or computer chips. Uh, so they are the unique supplier of the most advanced machines that the computer uh, chips manufacturers, not only the computer, but chips in general are using. Um, and I'm saying that given the, ex uh, the ever expanding usage of semiconductors, uh, their growing presence in all household appliances, uh, think 5G, it's coming and we might see uh, semiconductors included in refrigerators and washing machines and things like this. Uh, I'm not even going to mention the, the semiconductor shortage, the crisis that we had recently and I think it's still going on from, from what I see in the news. Uh, so I'm not going to necessarily mention that. It was already mentioned in this video that I have already recommended to you. Um, I think it's, it's very hard for anybody to imagine that Industry 4.0, so the actual industrial revolution that we are living right now in, uh, can be done without semiconductors. Uh, the electronic devices will be more and more present in our uh, lives and uh, I'm not talking only about the uh, mobile phones and computers and cars and so on and so forth, but any other type of device, electronic device that will be um, let's say developed in the future years will have to, to have semiconductors inside it and I'm saying that not only for this uh, company but for the sector as large so for all the semiconductors manufacturers the, the, the future looks quite, quite bright from my point of view I'm fascinated by this sector I'm heavily invested I took a, a let's say a index fund approach to the sector meaning that I don't know which one will be the winner the, in this competition or if not all of the of the companies will, will thrive in such a, an environment and I have invested in all of them basically so this is also like a disclaimer this is not financial advice just I'm just uh, 
telling you that I'm heavily invested in this sector and I believe in it because I see real uh, innovation here and real potential in, in the years that come. Um, I'm saying that ASML is probably the company that the, the, the most interesting and the largest company that nobody really talks about. Uh, probably that's because they don't present actors dressed as robots and say that they will produce robots somewhere in the future like Tesla does because everybody talks about Tesla, uh, nobody about the ASML. Um, I'm just saying that Nikon and Ka uh, Canon, uh, another large companies, you might know about them as uh, maybe uh, printer manufacturers or uh, camera manufacturers. But they used to be the leaders in, in uh, lithography. Uh, let's just say that they no longer they couldn't keep up with the ASML in innovation, and they, now they are no longer manufacturing um, lithography, or at least not for the largest and the most important manufacturers of semiconductors. Um, ASML is the company that helped uh, uh, TSMC. TSMC is the global leader in, in semiconductors manufacture. Uh, manufacturing is the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, uh, also a very nice company to invest in. Um, they overtook the leadership of the semiconductors manufacturing in, from, from Intel, which used to be the leader. Um, and they did this through proposing them this new technology, which was called EUV, Extreme Ultraviolet Technology. And this helped TSMC stay ahead of the competition ever since. Uh, so uh, they are now the leaders of the market before Intel and even Samsung. Samsung being a more diversified company, so they are also known for other electronic devices and not only for, for producing semiconductors. Um, the story is that Intel wants to be, and I have also said in the previous uh, presentation, Intel would like to uh, be again the leader of the semiconductors uh, manufacturers. Um, they might get into this position if they accept uh, an offer that they receive from ASML uh, to join again in a new innovation. Uh, so it's a, a new advanced system which is building on this extreme ultraviolet technology, adding this numerical aperture. Uh, so you can Google it if you want to find out technical details. This is not a presentation about technical details. Uh, I found this information on semiwiki.com. And it's considered that if uh, they, they join uh, hands and they uh, push forward with this innovation, the Intel might uh, become again the leader of the uh, semiconductors manufacturing industry, let's say. Uh, and that's why I'm also invested in Intel because just as I have said, I don't know which one will be the leader. Uh, Samsung seems not to be uh, having a very direct relation with, with uh, ASML, but whatever, they are in also a large competitor, they are benefiting. I think they will also benefit from the increasing opportunities in this market. Um, I'm showing you here the, the man is dressed as a robot, uh, the, 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 the ASML version, actually there are four uh, engineers or four technicians uh, that they are not really dressed as, a ro as robots, but they need to be appropriately dressed because these factories and uh, they need to be hermetically sealed and absolutely not a, a little bit of dust needs to come inside these factories. Uh, and I'm saying meet the true innovation, this one which you see in the, in the picture is a part of this $150 million machine, uh, which is considered a technical wonder. Um, due to United States efforts, it will never get exported in China, so it is in Taiwan, but Taiwan is not part of China, or at least not formally. Uh, and it will never get exported in China and they will never be able to uh, copy it and they will always stay behind in uh, processors manufacturing. Um, uh, ASML has already delivered 100 of such machines to the three large manufacturers I have named already, the TSMC, Intel and Samsung. Uh, just so that you understand how complex is this, uh, this uh, machine is delivered in 40 containers. Uh, then you needs to uh, the, the transport needs to use 20 trucks uh, and if it's going through the air it, it needs three uh, Boeing 747 airplanes uh, for one machine to get transported and just 
that you understand how this works and why we also have this this uh, semiconductor sh shortage is that these uh, factories are very complex and very expensive uh, one of them can cost in excess of five billions uh, and it's used such a machine uh, such machines are used in the car in the manufacturing facilities of companies as TSMC Intel and Samsung uh, you can find more details on wired.com and now going to our uh, main business or so to the numbers uh, talking about share price investors ratio so you have here the the share price uh, since uh, five years ago you have a compound uh, annual growth rate of 51 percent so it's quite clear that the, the shares price is increasing so it's a, it was a very good investment in the past i think it will continue to be a very good investment given the all the details that I have presented you so far. Um, so it started by being uh, 91.73 euros five years ago, and now the yesterday the, the shares were worth 719 euros at the end of the day. Uh, today they took, um, so today is, is uh, Tuesday, it's a good opportunity to buy. They took a little bit of beating, they lost 4%. So they were sold with 686. Uh, 40 at some point in time and you have some some investors ratio uh, the P ratio 60.29 might seem a little bit um, too large uh, however if you compare it with Tesla which has like a 400 plus from what I remember P ratio um, just think that the Tesla has a market cap of almost 700 billions ASML has only 286 so it doesn't seem uh, that uh, excessive uh, for me. Uh, it has uh, earnings per share uh, trailing 12 months of 11.48 euros um, and some other, um, there is no forward unfortunately uh, PE but I think the earnings should increase. Uh, we will see some trends immediately. Uh, so price to sales 17.24 it's a relatively expensive company but just as I have said, it's um, given the position as a monopoly that it has and as a leader in innovation, uh, I think it's quite okay to, to pay that much money for the shares of this company. Um, also, we don't have a, a price earnings and growth ratio, so this peg ratio, because we don't have a forward uh, earnings, so expected earnings, and we don't know what are uh, going to be the... Uh, earnings exp uh, growth expected for the next five years um, but we can go further and check some some um, financials other key financials uh, so on the top uh, left corner we have the um, revenues which are quite clearly growing from 2017 uh, there is a 55% increase in, in, in revenues till 2020 full year um, also uh, an improvement in the profit margin, uh, a, net, a clear net increase, uh, net income increase uh, with a profit margin of a little bit above 26%, which is quite good for, for, for any company to deliver profit margin of 26%. Um, then if we are going uh, to the right, uh, we can see that their asset base is growing also from 2017 to 2020 an increase of 47.29 in the total asset in the net assets um, however also the the debt seems to be increasing but they are maintaining at a heavy uh, at a decent level let's say it's a little bit in excess of 16.25 so probably 16.5 percent uh, exactly which is not that much uh, we are seeing in the financial management courses that uh, one to one uh, debt to equity ratio it's okay so 50% at 16.25 it's a company that is not really heavily leveraged it's quite okay it's, it's very uh, well run from my point of view um, also they are reporting increasing earnings per share for 2020 we had 8.8 .8 euros per share uh, with a 74.24 uh, growth percent growth from since 2017 
Uh, also from cash flow point of view, everything looks uh, very good. Uh, they have an operating cash flow that is growing from around 2, 2, 2 billion in uh, 2017. It grew to 5.3 billion, so the operating cash flow in 2020. Um, okay, the financing uh, cash flow was negative. They need to repay the credits and the interest uh, associated with credits, of course, it's uh, their debt. Uh, but also notice the yellow uh, bar, so in the, in the bottom right uh, corner of the graph, the yellow bar is the investing cash flow, which is uh, around 2 billion, and I think it will increase in the next period. They definitely have a lot of work to do, given the semiconductors uh, shortage that we just seen in the, in the market, and they will have a lot to invest uh, going for forward. However, the, the total cash flow is positive. So if we take 5.3 billion positive uh, operational cash flow minus 2 billion um, uh, investment cash flow and minus around 800,000 financing cash flow, we will still stay in the positive cash flow area. So it looks like a very healthy financial from financial point of view company. Uh, that would be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this company. It's they are not doing anything exciting, as in they are not showmen. They don't have CEOs that go to Saturday Night Live, uh, that tweet all day long about cryptocurrencies and things like this. But they are really a very good uh, company to invest in, from my point of view. Heavily uh, innovating in this, uh, what I would say that is a the epitome of, of, of uh, technological development, the semiconductors, and if you can imagine a world without that, at least in the next 10, 20, 30 years, then you are my, my guest to, to think of a world where the semiconductors don't exist. Uh, otherwise, it's, uh, I think, and it was for me, that's why I invested, it was a very good uh, investing opportunity. Uh, however, that's no, uh, no, not financial advice for you. You can do whatever you want. Uh, thank you for watching me. Please do not forget to like my video if you like it, to comment if you have something to add, uh, to share it with somebody that you might think can be interested about the, the topics and this presentation of a company. Uh, also, uh, most important, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the bell notification button. You will receive uh, updates wherever I'm posting a video, a new video. Usually I'm posting three times a week, um, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays or Saturdays. It depends. In the weekends it's a little bit shaky. However, three times a week is a given so far and I intend to keep to this uh, schedule. Also below this video you have uh, several links. You can create a Nitor account and trade there without a commission and a fee, uh, which should be very beneficial because no matter how often you are trading, not paying a commission or a fee is a saving. You have also two programs from Amazon, the two free, you can get two free audibles. If you like audiobooks or join the Kindle program, I'm also using a Kindle and reading books. It's very practical. And last but not least, there is a, a wish list also from Amazon with um, hardware and software uh, items that can help me improve the quality of my videos. Should you choose to help me this way, it's probably the most inconvenient for you, but it will be also very much appreciated. Uh, the most convenient way for you to support me would be just to hit the, the subscribe button. So to become my subscriber and to keep watching the videos that I'm preparing for your benefit. Uh, once again, my name is Alex Petrescu. Thank you for watching me and I look forward to presenting to you next time. Goodbye.